if we're talking like shortcuts, like you're trying to get a shortcut to ranking up, mechanics is never the answer. That is... What's up? I'm waiting. I have made hours of educational Rocket League content on YouTube. And he's one of three Rocket League coaches. What's up? My name's Paula. I'm Sabe or Nexus Sabe. That I called to debunk the most common Rocket League myths. Let's get into it. If you're new here, my name's Luke, and I'm known for running the Grand Champ Roadmap, where we take plat through champ ranked players up to GC in just six weeks time. If you didn't catch it, last week we sold out all available 120 seats in the coaching program. But good news is I was able to bring on and train two new coaches. So when this video goes live, we will be officially reopening enrollment. So if you're watching right now and you want that GC title, we now have 40 seats left before we sell out and have to go on pause again. If that's you, DM me on Discord with the keyword myth and we can talk details about coaching. My Discord will be the first link down below. Now, let's debunk some Rocket League myths. Number one, 1v1 is the fastest way to improve. Mmm, that's good, that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and say this one is true in most cases, not a myth. The biggest reason that I have for it is that in threes, there's three people on your own team. In twos, there's two people on your own team. In ones, you're literally the only person on your team that's that's playing. So all of that practice time, all of those touches on the ball, at least on a mechanical level, is being spent by you. Like you're the one getting better and getting more experience doing what you want with the ball. Warming up on 50% game speed makes you play faster. Ooh, so personally, I think it actually does purely because I spend I, God knows how much time in free play going around just hitting the ball aimlessly doing my mechanics and it certainly does make me feel faster when I do turn it back up to 100% but whether it actually does is obviously debated I think it definitely enhances your ability in kind of reading touches because you've obviously been practicing at 50 percent i would say it does to be honest because it just helps with with overall precision everyone should uncheck unlimited boost in free play mm, okay so this one this one is definitely true but it depends how you say it for the most part you should be using unlimited boost in free play just so you don't have to worry about it and you want to get as many reps as possible in free play obviously but sometimes you can generate bad habits from that as well by just being totally wasteful in your games. And I've seen it in so many players. So many people are so wasteful with boost. Uh, so I do think that you should uncheck unlimited boost in free play sometimes. But if you're looking at it like black and white, where it's like, all right, I'm only going to use unlimited boost or I'm only going to use limited boost, it's probably better to use unlimited boost because those reps are more important than being super conscious of boost usage while in free play. Practicing mechanics is the fastest way to rank up. Yes, that's that's a fact. That is completely untrue. That is a myth. Practicing positioning and the mental and the mindset, basically the game sense aspect of Rocket League is totally faster to rank up than practicing mechanics. For the most part, it comes down to just positioning and rotating properly, playing around your teammates really well, just the, the mental aspects of it like that. Realistically, mechanics is such a broad answer. Technically, in our mechanics, we have the fundamentals. you got you got aerials, you've got just being able to consistently like wave dash, half flip, right, recover well. You've got like decent shooting. And if you have really good fundamentals, it will help you improve more than anything else, right? Like you consistently aerialing or you consistently hitting the ball how and where you want, you know? If we're talking like shortcuts, like you're trying to get a shortcut to ranking up, mechanics is never the answer. It, mechanics are never gonna be shortcuts. Uh, it takes a long time to learn them and get good enough at certain mechanics to be able to use them in game. But rotation and like learning certain aspects of like paying attention to your teammates and stuff, that can definitely be a shortcut. I've seen people change one aspect of their game and boost up like five ranks just because that was holding them back by that much. You should always hold power slide when you land. You should, depending on different situations. So like if you get bumped, say off the wall or off just off the ground, you certainly should because then you can hold your momentum in whichever direction you need to be going. But say if you're like intentionally kind of falling off the ceiling or jumping from the wall and you've got a perfect landing that's straight, you don't need to. But again, it's obviously debated. For most cases, you, you should. You should always grab boost on kickoffs. That's a myth. You, you should be cheating. 
unless you're teamed up with a player or you do the like the rare back left back right you should always be cheating up the most common way to maintain any sort of pressure especially off kickoff where getting possession is like the most important part of it you need someone in order to follow up right get another 50 get a player that you know maybe gets possession off the kickoff you need someone instantly there because the other player that is going to cheat is going to get it otherwise grinding free play is the fastest way to improve mechanics oh so as a mechanics coach as a kind of expertise in mechanics i love free play and i certainly think it's 70 percent of improving mechanics but i certainly don't think it's all the way up there because you've got certain things like say if you want to improve your aerial touches or air dribbles you think got things like air dribble gauntlet where you have that perfect ring that is underneath the ball that gives you a perfect visualization of where you need to hit the ball every time, which obviously you can't have in free play. Default camera and controller settings are optimal. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> if you can find a single person that agrees with this, then I will be shocked because they are definitely not. <laughs> not a camera shake guy? No, I'm not a camera shake guy. <laughs> One of the first things you should do when you install the game is change your camera settings because the default ones are awful. I mean, they, I think the default FOV is like 90 or something still. Like I'm surprised they haven't changed that yet, but you should immediately change that for starters. Turn off camera shake, turn your FOV to max or at least close to it. Cause I mean, those two things alone will already give you so much more vision and just make you better at the game instantly. You should always queue casual to warm up before ranked. It kind of depends on how much you care. If you like care a lot about your rank and you want to be fully warmed up and everything, then yeah, go ahead and play play casual beforehand. Uh, but if you just kind of want to get in and immediately be in that action, that's kind of like how I treat the game. It's not going to be totally detrimental if you decide to skip out on casual. Again, I'm talking mid ranks, but if we're talking like high level stuff, then you definitely do need a, a warm up for like decision making and comms, especially like if you're with a team and everything, build up that energy because so much of like that high level stuff is based on energy and like team environment and like having a positive mindset, like we're going to win this. And if you go in straight to like an RLCS match with no like scrim beforehand, you're not going to play nearly as good because you're just jumping straight in like which is like moderate energy and everything, no momentum at all. Like momentum is so huge at that high level, but if we're just talking mid ranks, then playing casual matches isn't really too big of a deal. Party queue is better for ranking up fast than solo queue. Yes, the fact. But a lot of some people don't get along with like other teammates, so they do just solo queue. But in general, parting up with someone that you've played with before, that is, you've already played with each other, you've already got a little bit of synergy there. You know, you trust them, and that's that's actually one of the biggest things about parting up with someone. You don't party up with someone you don't trust to hit the ball. That's just facts, right? We don't party up with someone that's terrible if we want to win. So you know, it's definitely much better to be partying up with someone because you trust them. The fastest way to improve game sense is by watching pros. Okay, so it, it depends what rank you are because you'll see things differently and you'll you'll get different perspectives. But I would say it's certainly a massive help, especially if you're like GC kind of plus, because then you're actually able to hopefully implement and, and replicate so, some of the key things. But if you're a really low level player, just because of everybody else at that rank, it's going to be nothing like uh, a pro lobby so you're going to have to adapt in so many different ways i mean plat diamond gold it's literally usually just a pinball people throwing the ball away to each other so it's like you've got nothing to kind of work with the the same you would in, in a pro lobby <laughs> copying pro settings or pro play styles will help you rank up and improve at your rank I'm gonna have to say no on this one. And the reasoning of this is because, again, when you're watching pro gameplay and you're trying to rank up, uh, so I'm assuming, again, you're like somewhere in the intermediate ranks, you can't really relate to it nearly as much as you can someone who's just like a few ranks higher than you. There's just too many disconnects when you're trying to watch pro gameplay because they're just playing a whole other game. So if you're trying to rank up, don't go too far to where people are playing a whole other game. Maybe just like a few ranks higher if you're trying to watch and get better. So if you're plat, maybe watch some diamond or champ gameplay. You'll be able to relate to it and have more takeaways uh, and things to learn from that gameplay than you will from pro players gameplay. You can get grand champ with zero mechanics. 
I knew this was coming. I knew this was coming. Me being a mechanics coach, I was going to say, yeah, I remember the tweet you put out with this and it got so much, so many impressions because people were so mad. Do you have to have mechanics to get GC? <laughs> it's debatable because if you factor in the fundamental mechanics and what I would kind of consider fundamentals are like half lips, wave dashes, kind of power hits and solid aerial hits rather than like ceiling shots resets obviously air dribbles honestly and i always say this to whoever i'm coaching if you can hit the ball hard and accurately you can get gc you don't need anything else whether that's off aerials or ground shots i mean aerial is even better if you can shoot at top 90 every time then i'm sorry a, a champ one is not gonna be able to save that flipping around the field makes you play faster no, it doesn't. It makes you move faster because technically you get a speed boost when you flip. But if we're talking about playing faster, that has very little to do with your car's actual speed on the ground or in the air. Playing faster actually means making your decisions sooner. So for example, if there's like a, a ball up in the air and there's two people there, and then one person decides instantly that he's gonna jump for this. So he makes that decision super duper early and he's already heading up for the ball. And then the other guy's like, he decides really late, but he has the fastest air, fast aerial of all time. The guy who made the decision sooner is still gonna dust him to the ball. So playing fast is so much more reliant on making your decision sooner than it is about physically moving around the field faster. Demos are toxic or not good in comp. Uh, as as much as they annoy me in ranked, they certainly are viable and, and strategical in, in ranked. You see it all the time in pro lobbies. I mean, people hate like Com, for example, because of his playstyle, but you can't take away from the fact he's still such a good player, even if he didn't have the demos. As long as you're not like leaving and <laughs> leaving your teammates back 100% of the game and just demo chasing, then yeah, no. Especially when you're rotating back and say if there's a sitting duck in your half, then absolutely just go for a demo because it's, yeah, puts more pressure on them. You should flip to win every challenge. Uh, admit. Yeah, that's a myth. A common misconception in Rocket League is like good 50-50s come through just flipping, but single jump challenges are becoming like quite a lot of the time now the norm. Like don't get me wrong, like 50-50ing with flips is great, but single jump 50s where you can do the exact same 50 you'd get with a flip and still wave dash to recover, you know which one I'm picking, right? Like this, the single jump 50s are really good because you can take a 50 and not fully commit. As soon as you flipped, you have committed. So you're going to, you're automatically slower in recovery and last but not least it's best to defend from inside your net okay so, certainly not <laughs> squishy saves yes they they can be useful especially if you know how to do them and they can catch people off guard but if we're talking rotations then back post is always the way to go but you should never prioritize just parking the bus standing in net because you have no momentum I see it all the time. It's like people will just do the typical back forward, back forward in the back of the net. And when they go up, especially if they've just reversed and they tried to aerial, the ball will just like, it'll almost just buckle your car and you won't be able to save it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. No, don't park the bus, folks. Uh, that hits it. And any other myths I missed? Myth, going back post is bad. That's a myth. myth. Go back post, please. <laughs> what? But, but I <laughs> rotated front post and I saved it one time. <laughs> that doesn't matter. You got lucky. Oh my God. This, uh, <laughs> don't get me started. To the people watching, where can they find you? Where can they ask you more questions? Where can they bug you? At PolarDDR on Twitter. Best place to find me. You search Wayton, W-A-Y-T-O-N. I don't really make a lot of tutorial stuff nowadays, but uh, I make some cool like cinematic documentaries and video essays. So you can find me on YouTube if you type in just Seba or Seba RL. I hope they like my insights. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they won't. Don't worry. It's the YouTube comment section. <laughs> <laughs>